or uh, some of their tanks. We know Fnatic are not necessarily going to trend towards the Mundo and the Shivana. At least they haven't in the past. So it actually gives Millennium a little bit more breathing room. I think it's say, well, we sort of can get our hands on those powerful picks. Mm. But then you have to say, how do Fnatic respond? They've used Trundle, they've used Shen. There are options available. So what will it be? Will it be Mundo for Kevin in the top lane? Will they maybe think, should we allow the Renekton? Uh, Renekton to Shivana through? Will Fnatic actually go for that? Because they baited themselves. They baited their opposition into it yesterday. It was SK Gaming. SK, yeah. The one thing that, that, that can work or that is going to be interesting about the other lanes is the mid laners. No ban on Ziggs, no ban on Gragas. And I no think ban on Yasuo. Both of those could be going that route. So we'll see how they decide to lock it in. And interestingly, mm. Rene is going back to Lee Sin. He's going back to the, the, the champion that he really was quite famous for in the summer split of last year. Has uh, an even, you know, I think it was 2-2 two and two win record with him for the last split. Not Vi. I think maybe Millennium were anticipating that mm. if they picked Vi Fnatic in a counter. Yeah, they must have some sort of counter for it. See if it works. Lee Sin was, like you say, what, it, what he made popular back in back in the summer. Pulled it back, even when Diamond wasn't even playing it. Managed to bring it back there. Soaz and Cyanide. Will we see Vi being picked up against Aranea? So Cyanide has also played Vi in the past. Cyanide, I think Cyanide's one of the most versatile junglers in terms of the champions he can play. Because we see him doing a lot of picks. It's, it's a trend that most of Fnatic have. It hasn't been locked in yet, but if the Wild Growth does get locked in with it, that's a very nice initiation. You have the Assault and Battery to follow through. Once people are getting knocked aside, you can knock them up into the air. And because you've got multiple knockups, this may even be a Yasuo bait. Because my first instinct is knock up on Lulu, knock ups with Vi, knock up into Yasuo, it could be there. So Millennium now have some extra juicy things to think about. Well, it also works. Obviously, Cyanide dives in, gets the knock up, yep. then you knock everyone back up. But once again, like you say, there's a, there's a lot of abilities there. Nami is a potential. We've seen Jerry playing a multitude of supports. I don't think we're going to see Fiora. If we do, then I think Greg Sky Williams might actually be tweeting in a rage. Yeah, he would probably be losing it, as it were. But no, not going to be the case. Instead, we're going to see a safe pick from Millennium. This is the smart thing to do. You leave your solo laners until you've got a better idea of what Fnatic are doing. And because Millennium have not picked in a mid laner or a top laner right now, this puts Fnatic now on the back foot. They have the option to go for the likes of <laughs> Hell, you could put Wukong top and you can put Yasuo in the mid and you've got a million knockups and a very good engage. You know, that's a, a massive amount of damage that could come down from press R compositions. But I'm just theorizing now. I, I don't really know if they're going to go that route. And I'm I'm a little interested to see what that top lane will be because Shivana, Renekton, Dr. Mundo all still yeah. on the cards and yet no one going for them. Five picks in. Could this be a first sign of a turn between the European teams to think, okay, these really aren't that much of a first pick anymore. I think it's more of a case of just these two particular teams. Yeah. You know, I think Fnatic, they don't trend towards those types of champions. Uh, it's not really their favorites. So uh, it's it's allowed them, and in, in fact, it's going to be LeBlanc. So not going to be the Assassin of Yasuo, but it is going to be LeBlanc. And I have not been impressed by the LeBlanc plays we've seen so far. Well, LeBlanc on Peke. That's something I am excited to see because I like seeing Peke on Assassins. I've said this before. Same with Alex. Any mid laner, honestly. I don't like the farm heavy champions that they do sometimes go with. I like to see the explosive battles. It's what I like as a play by play caster. No surprise there. But look at it. Yasuo is locked in at last. That's going to be top lane Yasuo. So this is actually very interesting because, with the exception of maybe Dragon's Rage Kick and a tidal wave, there may be a lot more pressure on Kevin to land these. Um, no, I've heard this is going to be top lane Gragas. This is going to be top lane Gragas. This is something Tafisio has been talking to me about. Millennium play tank Gragas in the top lane have been doing it in scrims. And it's going to be Kerb playing Yasuo in the mid lane. And if it's not, then I've been baited by Tafisio, but I'm pretty sure that's the way it'll, it'll end up. Well, he's in there right now. We'll see whether he switches around. Don't forget, I've heard Aranair also plays it in the jungle, so it's another interesting one. Remember, Insect did that at the All-Stars in uh, Shanghai last time. But it is going to be Renekton in the top lane. That was the final choice for Soaz. So Soaz going with those tanky top laners. So Fnatic sticking with a little bit more of a traditional comp, dare I say it. Assassin in the mid, Renekton up top. They've got strong initiation with Vi and Lulu. And to be honest, it's a bit boring. Millennium! Gragas top lane. This is going to be full tank, right? Now, what DeFisher has been telling me from how Kevin plays it, he doesn't put any points at all into his barrel roll, does go for, no, sorry, body slam. 
He maxes his barrel roll and his damage reduction on his Drunken mm. Rage. Gets a lot of items up, pops the Drunken Rage, flashes into a team fight, and literally just uses utility. Slows people with his body slam, knocks people away with his ultimate. And if that spreads people up a little bit, Yasuo, being played by Kerp, can dive in there and kill them. And I hope it works that way because it's going to be hell of exciting. We've also got, obviously, the Lee Sin Kick, the Nami Bubble, a yep. lot of, lot of items. Bubble, as well as the Tidal wave. wave. The Tidal Wave going across. There's a lot of options available for Yasuo. We'll see if it works. This is his first game. I'm excited to see it. And it is time to see what you guys at home voted for. The team with the most thumbs up by a landslide, Shock Aura. Is Fnatic at 90% to the 10% on Millennium. It was 96 yesterday, I believe. 93, I remember. Yeah. I remember 93 and 7, but I've missed a few of the losses. That, that's a big vote. That's a big, big vote, especially against Millennium. This is a team that had a lot of momentum coming into this game. And as we move into the rift, well, what are we expecting to see from these two teams? Are we expecting any early aggression? We haven't yet seen a level one fight. We have to see roaming. I mean, Millennium has to move around. They need the utility and the knockups of the rest of the team to help Yasuo out. It's going to be so difficult explaining what Yasuo does, but I'll try my best as we see the abilities. And I think if we can see Kevin and Kerp uh, working together, pushing down dragons and roaming across the map, it is a very scary combination. And they've also got an immense amount of mobility on the side of Millennium as well. So, Millennium starting out as the blue side on your screens, followed by Fnatic as the red teams. Pings are plenty, and all of them are for the top here, Trevor. They are all going in, five members. You made a special request for level one as we're getting saying there's no level one fights, and right now, I think Millennium have read this. Ooh. Millennium are going to know Fnatic. They're going to no. see each other, and that was very lucky. They will have seen one another's position, so if Millennium do not stay grouped up, Fnatic can challenge for this blue buff, which is what I think they're going to do, and that can put uh -oh, the back. Kevin's dead. Oh, Kevin! Face check in the bush. The leash comes out from Peke. It's going to be just about enough. The Ignite will take it down. Who do they want to give it to? That's the question. They're not going to let him get away. They had to flash for it, Cyanide. Two flashes as well. Peke followed suit. He got, uh, closed the gap for a second. For a second. We thought he was going to survive. I have Stroll no idea. Away. Big grag ass, but no, yeah, no idea. Not going to happen for him. Uh, Ignite was used in there as well. Who was that? So that was three summoner spells burnt for that kill. And they were clearly must have been trying to set it up for Reckless, but he just couldn't seem to get a shot. I've just rewinded the replay on my PC. They are 100% sure they spotted Fnatic. Millennium knew about Fnatic's position. The one thing is, Soaz was the only one that was spotted. So Kevin may have anticipated, it's only Renekton. It's only Renekton, it's only Soaz. I can check this. And unfortunately, history has proven otherwise, as it were. Millennium give up their first blood. Unfortunate that it was Kevin as well. He's usually such a solid player. This may put him a little bit on tilt. Well, he's on that Grag Ass. It's a, a unique pick for the top lane as it is. And we'll see whether it does work out for him. It does seem that it's going to be a 2v1 situation because we do see Reckless in Yellow Star going up towards the top. Peke immediately getting aggressive comp by Kerp. And Trevor, we're going to start talking about that middle lane straight away because Yasuo up against LeBlanc, it's, a, it's an interesting one immediately. So the first thing I want to touch on right now, Jerry trying to steal or interrupt Cyanide's blue. A little bit difficult. What we've seen from Kerp diving onto LeBlanc, he was using his E spell. It's the Sweeping Blade. Now it's a 0.5 second cooldown and it allows you to dash to any target once every 10 seconds. That will get down as you level it up. And it progressively stacks damage up to about double after four stacks. So what you'll see Kerb doing is dashing through minions to hit champions multiple times over and over and over. And you actually just seen there him in the mid lane getting his passive. That's a little shield that he gets from his flow bar, which he actually stacks from moving around the map. And there is the Steel Tempest leveled up. He's going to try and get some poke on with that one. But Peck 8. Didn't get the first blood, but despite the fact he flashed for it, that's that's miscommunication, I feel, from the two. They were just like, holy, he's going to get away. Everybody yeah. go for it. Quickly panic in there. There is the Q working in action. That is the Steel Tempest. So three hits of that, that's when the Whirlwind comes out. That's it. And you can actually do two different things with that. You can throw out a skill shot, basically Howling Gale, or you can spin and knock people up while dashing with your E. We do see RNA has snuck himself in, and Peck is going to be in a little bit of trouble. He's going to get taken low. Will his mirror split off? Who will they go for? Will it be the right one? No, it won't. RNA was fooled. The clone from Peck's passive was enough to pull them away. I was looking if Ignite had been used, and it had not. There's the knockup. Peck should be able to survive. There's not enough damage. The Ignite comes in. There's not enough damage. Sidesteps the Q. He's going to fall.
force the tower damage. It's not going to be enough on our RNA. There's no jungler nearby. Very well played, I think, by RNA and Kerb. They actually hesitated in the flashes, waiting for the call. And I think RNA said, I'm going in, I'll tank. And they managed to make it work. We do see a, a gank here from Cyanide trying to put Kevin one, even further behind. He hasn't even touched a minion right now. Zero CS to his name. As Fnatic deny even more CS by allowing it to die to the tower. A lot of pressure. You talked about how he doesn't really build up the uh, the slam and as it stands he had to go for it because he tried to dash away with it and that's what's causing him problems he's got no he's only just got those barrels to try and throw it out but it sounds like actually judging by the googling 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 he hasn't actually gone for it so he's gone with the drunken rage instead so he's still not got the barrels which is why he's yep. got no cs cannot farm with it i think he needs to deviate from his strategy a little bit trying to remember exactly the specifics of of how deficio was telling me it worked and the the basic premise is that he's a a different version of Malphite, effectively. A low cooldown on that exploding cask is going to allow them to continually knock people around. We do see that now Aranea is once again trying to set up a gank. We talked about how his style is very heavily gank uh, situated, but Soaz is fully aware he's there. Soaz is sticking around at this tower. He's not expecting the dive right now. Now, I guess the stun down Aranea, and actually J. Reed took a tower hit before it even began which immediately caused some problems. Top tower does go down. Fnatic have struck first with first blood and now with that first tower, giving them that small gold advantage. But they are keeping here. Soez is not backing off. He's all on his own. There's no help for him here. Yeah, there's definitely a focus from Millennium to get the tower. They realize that Caden and Lulu is going to move to the bottom lane and try to defend this once they're done pushing because they haven't stopped yet. That's a three-man Fnatic moving towards the top in a turret. And unless Millennium rotates Kerb's Yasuo there, they should be able to pick a lot of damage off that tower as well. Well, the pixie turning Kevin into a tiny little squirrel. A it, munchkin. A munchkin, whatever you'd like to call it. He makes it tiny. It's going to be Kerb and Becca going aggressive. The leash is going to land. It's going to stun him up, and he's not going to follow through. Instead, now Kerb just dashes in. This is going to be such an explosive one. I love to see the cameraman's face when this starts kicking off. I'd like to see your face when it starts kicking <laughs> off. I wish you the best of luck keeping track in him. Now, I would like to see Kerb use that Steel Tempest while dashing with his Sweeping Blade, the E, because he does actually knock everybody up in a circular radius around him. And his ultimate can only be targeted targeted on people that are airborne or basically off the ground. Soaz now, he's roamed around, has left that bottom tower thanks to Reckless and Yellow Star moving in to defend. And if Kerb gets caught, he's not going to. Great usage of Wind Wall. First time we're seeing it, it blocks all projectiles that go through it. It includes skill shots, it includes auto attacks. The only thing it's not blocked is tower hits. Yeah, so that ace in the hole may well get blocked off quite a lot late on with that Wind Wall. I'm expecting to see it going to make too much of that through. So as though, he's gone back to base. He's going to head in towards that top lane, gets himself a Doran's Blade on Renekton and the uh, Ruby Gem. So a little bit of additional HP, going to be dealing with that sort of tanky Gragas up top. And you talked about how the Wind Wall can block Ace in the hole. Vi is not a projectile. And my point with this is, once Vi <laughs> sticks to somebody with a Salt and Battery, Wind Wall is not going to interrupt it. How um, the super hot crew dealt with Meet your makers, Yasuo, was by picking Zin Zhao, who throws himself through the wall. So, similar type of uh, champion pick to get around that very, very powerful ability. Aaron Air coming around the backside here. He's going to come into the walls, finds out Cyanide is there, <laughs> gets the walls down as well, and forces Cyanide away. I thought he maybe will come around the backside of Peke, but instead he is going to head around towards that blue off. Yeah, I definitely think the original intention was to go for a gank, but didn't work out for them. Now, with a two man on blue, they should pick this up. Smite is not available for Cyanide either, so we should see Aaron Air stealing it away. He does secure it. Now they're in a little bit of trouble. Great Dragon's Rage back. <laughs> Assault and battery was used. Quickly, Dragon kicks him straight back. Reckless wants Aaron Air, though, and now they realize they're in trouble. It's a four on four down this bottom lane. Kerb though putting the damage down. Can Peke get on towards the support of Jay Reno? No, there's a lot of damage going back and forth and it's Millennium on the back foot here. They're going to get the Glitter Lance. Not quite catching. Piltover comes across only on Jay Reed. Great Steel Tempest knocks them all back. Yeah, Kerb throwing out that knockup. I think Fnatic were aware of the potential of being knocked in the air and jumped on by that final breath. Unfortunately, with all the damage that Millennium have now taken, Fnatic should be able to secure themselves their second tower of the game and they're going to extend their gold lead to around 2,000. Yeah, the double wave came in just at the right time because Fnatic were already pushing the lane down. Like you say, Siege Minion in there. That will be second turret going down. That's going to stretch that gold lead that Fnatic were already grouped. Kevin 
find Soas, comes around that forest wall, does manage to catch a good stun on towards him, slice and dice across him, he doesn't have enough damage, neither of them do, but Kevin again in trouble, and it's Dragon now for Fnatic. Very good play by Soas, he actually sliced and diced through the body slam, Arane is going to try steal, it's very low, he may be able to get it, not if he's a munchkin, and he can't follow through. Oh, and he just didn't have the Q there, that was a very, very Good munchkin. Mm, uh, great timing from Fnatic. The team fight that they won picked him up a tower and a dragon. They're extending their goal lead quite significantly right now. And uh, I want to touch on this Kevin Gragas right now. Uh, we talked in the beginning how he's not going to level up those barrels, his Q, and he's sticking to it. He's got three ranks in his drunken range, his W, and only single uh, two points in the body slam of his E. So with him being level six, I'm now anticipating Kevin to roam a little bit more, get more involved with the Aranea ganks, because I think Aranea has done about five or six ganks already at the 10-minute mark. Yeah, and he's got them boots and mobility, like I say, he wants to get in there. Meanwhile, of course, thinking about how they're building, there's not a lot of ability power to worry about. If Kevin is going to go tanky, this could well be a problem for Millennium will come late game. Yeah, with the fact that almost all of the damage is going to be centered around armor-based uh, champions like Lee Sin, Yasuo, and Lucian, Fnatic are going to be able to just prioritize armor. Now, Kerb could get jumped on. A little careful. The one thing to also remember about Yasuo's ultimate is after he throws down the final breath, he gains 50% armor penetration on bonus armor. So it makes it actually very powerful against teams that stack an immense amount of armor themselves. We do see Aaron Air coming around, Cyanide having to back away from this one once again. He did have Smite available, but didn't want to get baited into it this time because potentially they're setting up for something. We see whether it's going to be the red buff because that's just around the corner. It is spawned up there. And I think that's maybe where they're oh. going to go. Another great win wall from Kerb. That blocked both the Sigil of Silence as well as the Chains of Distortion there from Xpeke, just preventing both of them to hit. And if you can interrupt that burst combo, LeBlanc's not very scary at all. So very good play, but it is a high cooldown. 24 seconds or so uh, in the early stages of the game, so you've got to be very careful. Kerb now's in a little bit of trouble. Leash doesn't find Kerb. He's got that. I uh, have Whirlwind available, which he's already used, and now so is he's going to go straight in towards him. Stun comes out, Cyanide Assault, Battery follows through, gets the knockback, has to try and jump away, Sl flashes away, he's going to get stunned once again from Soas any moment. Now Kevin's going to have to use that explosive caster, but backwards didn't work out, but nevertheless, Kerb will walk off. So very lucky there by Kerb to have the assistance of Kevin. Kevin forced to use that explosive cast very defensively, and now Creatin almost getting caught by a Yellowstar and Reckless. He's keeping up in CS, but it's Yellowstar and uh, Reckless are determining the tempo of this lane, keeping Millennium defending against their tower. And in fairness, you know, we've been talking about this amazing partnership down the bottom. Not a lot of action from them just yet. 94 CS to 84 CS, Creighton has fell behind, but remember, it was a four-man push down that bottom, so no surprise there. And I think part of the reason for that is the champion pick. Because they've got a Caitlyn and a Lulu who can do a lot of damage, you know, pushing waves quite quickly with the Glitter Lance and the Pilter of a Peacemaker, that's a... Fast push duo, if I can you know, coin that phrase. And I think they got the top tower, they got the bottom tower, and they've got a dragon. Yes, they're not exactly flashy with all the kills, but they haven't died yet, and they've got a lot of objectives for their team, so it's working in their favor. It's just dawned on me that the speed that he's pulling that wind wall out, he's doing it with a trackball, guys. Yeah, I, I, we're <laughs> going to keep saying that throughout this, um, well, forever. As long as <laughs> Kerp is playing. He's doing all of these little tips and tricks with that trackball. Once again, Peke going in. A little bit of the damage has been blocked by the wind wall. So two things to note in terms of build. Yasuo uh, will build, prioritize some, some critical hit. His passive also gives him double critical hit chance. So static shiv into infinity edge is the standard build, if I can use that term loosely, but we haven't seen it in professional play. So we'll see how Kerp uh, decides to itemize further. As it is, it's almost certainly going to be the Static Civ, I feel. He's got that uh, average blade in there already. Peke, again, on LeBlanc. I was about to say, hasn't seen too much from him. Has to flash away there. Kerb's getting caught, stunned down. He's going to get locked up there. The tower's going to be traded very nicely. Aranea picks it up, and that's going to be the kill for Kerb. Very good play. Kerb was tanking the initial tower shots, and once he got, became untargetable while he's flying through the air like only a... Highway Noon Samurai can. Uh, he manages to <laughs> block it, and it's actually Aranea that took the last couple of shots. So a very good combo, and you've seen how it worked. Even though Kerb failed his knockup, that's exactly what happened. It was Aranea's kick that allowed Kerb to jump onto him. So two kills for Yasuo in his inaugural appearance in the LCS. And again, 
This is another LeBlanc that has not impressed me. This time Peke is having a chance at it. And it doesn't seem to be working. Obviously, it must be something they're practicing solo queue. But solo queue is not the LCS. It doesn't always work there. No, I've got to be a little bit careful. Assault and battery onto Kurt. Assault and battery. Don't think they have enough damage. And I think he's got far enough away. Or do they? Kurt taking solo. Dashes away. Tries to pull him back. I'm not too sure where he's thinking to go. And throws out the, the, uh, the Steel Tempest. But again, not going to be able to get away from that one. Not sure why he came away from the turret there. He was trying to be a little bit cheeky with the wind wall because it blocks multiple projectiles. But a Renekton and a Vi don't have projectiles. So the wind wall didn't really work in his favor. Also remember that his dash, that E, it takes you a set distance. So if you are standing right in front of a target and you dash through him, you'll sh overshoot him as Yellowstar gets hooked. Yellowstar caught in the Aqua Prison. Isn't going to be enough damage from Kraton? No, it's not. But it is a good burst, and that's going to keep them on their back foot for a short period of time. Blue buff given across to Peke. We'll see whether that helps him out in the lane phase. Well, I want to highlight the Kevin right now. Still zero points in that barrel roll. He is working his way towards a Sunfire Cape. And, you know, Julian, he's now basically a mega tank. It's Gragas that has utility. And we'll see how this works because there is a lot of damage that can come out from Yasuo. But he has to hit multiple targets with that ultimate of his. So a lot of pressure on using Final Breath at the right time. And the, there's a lot of pressure on Kevin because Dr. Munda was available, Shivana was available, they weren't chosen. He went with the Gragas pick, so this is a lot of scrutiny going to be on this pick up against the Renekton. Fnatic once again, they've got the timers, they got the first dragon, looks like they're going to get the second. Aranea once again going to try and come in, he's going to throw that kick out, will the Whimsy go back on towards him? This time he's going to come in, Smite not going to land, he has to flash out. Yeah, I did need to get away clean from that one. He actually had a ward available, so if he'd been a little bit more in time, he could have potentially just, you know, placed a ward down and dashed out. Nevertheless, still ineffectual for the second attempt. Smite was used at the exact same moment between the two junglers, so that was just simply a smite fight, and I think Cyanide realized the damage potential that Aranea was going to be a little bit later. Millennium need multiple kills, or they need a tower now. They are falling too far behind in gold. It's, it's climbing to 3,200 right now. And yes, they have the potential to pick up kills with this Yasuo. But if Fnatic get five, six, seven thousand 7,000 uh, uh, gold ahead, then it's going to become impossible because they're just too far out of reach for your assassin to work. We talked about how Peke is maybe not impressing on LeBlanc right now, but it is because it's RNA's gangs that are shutting him down. So I'd like to see the first real fight with multiple members of each team before we completely write off LeBlanc. Well, it's an 800 gold differential in that top lane between the Renekton of Soaz and Kevin. Soaz did a great job in a 3v1 early on in the game. and He's probably faces Kevin, I guess, in a solo queue before, kind of knows what he's expecting, but doesn't seem too flustered by it. Well, we'll see how it works out for the time being because this tank, Gragas, it's something that Deficio knew about. Deficio was super kind enough to tell me about it so I could tell you guys about it. <laughs> and it's working out exactly as predicted. Kevin is playing it in scrims. It, it's something that I'm almost 100% sure all of the pros will be aware of or it'll maybe even seen multiple mm. times. And I, I, I like the theory behind it. Ta you know, he's got a, a built-in damage reduction. He's got, you know, a damage amplification steroid on his, his auto attacks. And his ultimate is on a very low cooldown. So in theory, it should work. But he has been crippled quite severely in the early game. And it's going to take Millennium time to build him up to a point where they want to fight. Okay, again, just dodging out Aaron Air, trying to get in to get that gank, trying to get help out Kerp in that mid lane. Get him rolling. He's already got that static shift and Vampire Acceptor. Infinity Edge may well be next. It seems to be the standard build. We'll see if it works out. One thing that has impressed me is that while Fnatic took down those two early turrets, not a great deal else has happened in terms of turret pushing. Soaz is going to be in trouble right now as three members of Millennium are starting to close him in. He has his Slice and Dice and Flash available. And here come Aranea and Kerp. The kit comes across. He gets launched straight back across there. And he goes straight to the path of Aranea. It's going to be Kerp that they'll give it to. No, it's Aranea that took it. They're going to lose the tower though. So yes, that was a great coordinated kill. However, four members of Fnatic are sitting in the mid lane. They've got the tower and they're going to back away. There's not many ultimate available for Millennium. Oh, they've landed the kick. Will the Lee Syndrome set in? He goes for it. Doesn't really find his target. It's Cyanide that goes in. Wild Growth pops him up. Peke gets in there. Doesn't manage to burst down Aaron Air. Gets the leash on Kurt. Kurt will go down. That's going to be a kill for Reckless. He's going to continue that KDA stomp. And now without Tower, they can continue chasing. Yeah, Fnatic are going to just keep them on. Oh, Great bubble! What a fantastic bubble coming out of J. Ree there. That's going to stop Peke in his tracks. And it gives Kreat on a kill. J. Ree landing the perfect Aqua Prison preventing Xpeka's LeBlanc from getting involved. 
Uh, we have seen our first team fight. LeBlanc, no. Stop picking her, people. It's not working. The one thing that I think Fnatic could have done even better in that fight is Cyanide used his Assault and Battery to stop Aranea. He should have known that Dragon Rage had been used in the top lane, and I think if he had stuck to Kerp or to Creatine, maybe killing one of the carries could have allowed Fnatic to do even more with that fight. But I'm just nitpicking a little bit as they did win the bigger engage, and unfortunately Pekka got a little greedy. Yeah, I mean, that may well simply go down to the communication of Soaz. Soaz didn't maybe put across that that ultimate had been used while they were focusing on the middle turret. You know, all the best teams, they need clean communication, and this may be a sign that it's not quite as crisp as if we make out for Fnatic. Aranea taking that red buff away. We'll see how it works out. And he did get that kill, remember, on Rousseauaz up in that top lane, which takes him to that 1-0-2. We are seeing potentially Infinity Head starting out by Kerb here. With I think Reckless is in trouble here. There's a lot of bursts oh, that yeah. can come from uh, Kerb. Oh, this could be his first death. We'll see whether it works out. Kerb's going to get on static chip used. Yellow Star is there to save the day. Yeah, very smart play by Kerb to not dive. I think had I been in Kerb's shoes, the title of killing Reckless for the first time would have baited me into tower <laughs> diving. And I think controlled play from Kerb and Aranea was, was the smart move. What we are seeing though is after 20 minutes of gameplay, Aranea is ganking with Kerb. That's the fourth or fifth time he's, he's moved to Kerb's lane this entire game. And I'm expecting it to continue because of the, the synergy that the two champions have. Allow Kerb to deal the big burst and then if it doesn't kill the person, the uh, uh, Sonic Wave Resonating Strike combo from Lee Sin can then close it out. Blue buff gets picked up by Peke. Aranea just being forced away by Reckless. He's trying to get in on those walls to see if he forces the smite here because the dragon is up in a minute. So he doesn't want to waste that spell. Creaton almost dived upon by Peke, but Kerp is churning down that tower. So that's the first tower for Millennium. So well played by Millennium to pick up their first big objective. With Dragon spawning in a minute, it allows them to set up vision around the Dragon Pit just a little bit safer and real makes Fnatic challenging for Dragon if they want to, just a little bit more riskier. So I really like this play. What I think Millennium should probably do is group in the mid lane. And if Fnatic go for Dragon, Millennium go for the tower. Or, or if they you know, have a good positional advantage, they can pick a fight. But I think forcing Fnatic to choose one or the other is the way that Millennium should play it. So we'll see whether Peke's blue buff, now with the death fire grasp, is enough to drop someone. Because that's what he's missing right now. He's not been able to get going. He's not been able to snowball because he's been bullied, because he's been picked on by this man right here, Kerp, who now has gone for the chain vest. Yeah, so he's going to get a little bit more of defensive statistics. Um, you know, you could even go for something like an Atma's Impaler and then build some HP. Considering his passive doubles the critical hit chance, it actually gives you more gold efficiency from an item like that. But I really want to see where it goes to. After all the talk of the Dragon, it did force Fnatic to pick. They weren't in position to defend and they want to try Barrel Mid. And that's the first Dragon picked up by Millennium. Now Peke is going to have to exit stage left here because he's going to get forced on by the rest of Millennium as they come piling across. Kevin and Aranea giving chase. So as may well be the target. We see Pe Kerb going in there, goes aggressive. So as goes away, that's going to be the kick on Reckless. Will they get the first kill on Reckless? They've done yes, it! Yes, they will! Kevin's the man that takes it. Explosive cast comes in. Sino well, may well be next. So as that big tanky Dominion is trying to run out, but he's in trouble as well. Millennium closing the gap here. Get the knock him up in the air. There's not going to be enough. Last breath's already been used. Yellow Star the focus now. He hasn't died either. Can they just close out that one? You bet your life they can. It's Grant on the gets it. And the myth, the legend of the duo lane, Reckless Yellow Star has died against Millennium. Officially dethroning that lead. Great play by Millennium. And the thing that I love the most, Kerb initiates onto Soaz, places the wind wall right in the choke zone coming from there. Look at this wind wall. If anybody from Fnatic throws anything that way, it's not going to work. The, the last breath from Yasuo, not necessarily 100% ideal. It didn't hit multiple targets. But because they killed Reckless, the AD carry of Fnatic, the rest of the team just stuck together and a very, very smart play by Kevin. He picks the next target they should focus, not who the damage dealers are. Shuts down Yellow Star and he is still playing that tank raggers. No ability points placed into that barrel roll yet. Full points in W, full points in E. And uh, no ability power picked up either because there's not a single item on the board. He's going for the Spirit Visage now, so he doesn't care about ability power right now. Going full tank and the explosive cask worked there, and it seems to be working out well. Working wonders against Soaz, who seemed a little helpless in that fight. Yeah, Soaz unfortunately can't offer a lot of interruption. Had you been playing a Shivana, you can disperse the team. You can knock multiple people away. 
Renekton is great in the smaller skirmishes, the 3v3s, the 4v4s, where he's got a single target stun. He does quite a lot of AoE damage once his ultimate's running, but that's really it. There's not a lot of threat to the rest of the Millennium team. And unfortunately, because Soaz couldn't jump onto Creatin's Lucian or similar, it didn't do much. So this is one of the shortcomings of not playing one of those champions that is probably a little bit stronger right now. So, Creaton now the unkillable at the moment. 2-0-1 in this one. Trinity Force, he's complete along with that Bloodthirster up against the Bloodthirster Static Shift and the beginnings of a Last Whisper for Reckless. So, AD carries, in terms of victory, it is all on Creaton now, and we said, can Creaton and Jerry face up against that bottom lane? They've done it, and it seems to be working wonders. Where do they go from here? Millennium need to get more towers. They've got one outer tower still standing in the top lane. They've, they've pulled back that gold lead now to only a thousand between the two teams. And I think with Millennium's team fight strength, really, they actually have a better 5v5. Fnatic have the ability to single somebody out and kill them. Assault and Battery plus LeBlanc plus Ace in the hole can be a dead person. But only if Windwall's not available and only if they don't get dispersed by the Gragas barrel. So I think Millennium should be roaming as a five-man, looking for those hard fights. Oh, Reckless is in trouble. Reckless is going to get aggressed upon. It's not going to be explosive. Cash use. Yes, it is. It actually blew in in an odd direction. The kick follows through. Reckless in trouble. He's on the tower. It doesn't matter. And he's just going to get dropped once again. The stats are falling. Kevin playing tank Gragas. I seen him under the tower. like, oh, this is going to be bad. Gragas is going to... Oh, wait. He tanked the tower the entire time because he's got a Sunfire Cape and a Spirit Visage there. The Spirit Visage is going to help his passive heal as well. So he's already back up to eight, you know full HP. And this could be the third tower of the game for Millennium. And remember, as uh, Enrated pointed out, that explosive cast comes available very quickly. He hasn't really got a great deal of cooldown. Only the Spirit Visage giving it in a moment. But it is starting to get there. He is going to get locked out by a little bit by Peke. But with the magic resist that he got, with that big tank, it's not a problem for him. And Fnatic, look at this. They're trying to go aggressive. And Aaron A just walks away. They're going to continue chasing. Peke's nearly out of mana. Yeah, Kevin's Assault in trouble. battery goes down on Kevin. Kevin is just going to slide away. No, there's going to be the wild growth. Will pop off. And that should be the kill on Kevin. But look how much it took to take him down. Yeah, that's just massive, massive damage reduction from his Drunken Rage. Forces Fnatic to put a lot more focus on him. But we talked about how Renekton is better in those 3v3s, the, four, the smaller skirmishes. And that's exactly what Fnatic got. They got a situation where their composition was better. Fnatic, now looking at Baron, they've killed the pink ward. They may try to bait Millennium in. Look at Curb's positioning. They're killing all of the wards and they haven't started Baron. This is a bait. They're trying to pull Millennium towards them to pick another fight. And Millennium are falling for it. I'm not sure if they will. Creaton should be able to dash away from this one. Takes a shot from Reckless. That is a lot of damage on him already. He realizes he's in trouble and he's, he's going to run away. He is dead. He's an ace in the hole. Going to come in. Who will get the killing blow? It's going to be Cyanide. Oh, no, Reckless. Yeah, Reckless manages to land that last auto attack. I'm not sure why Kerb decided to go right when he could have stuck with the rest of his team, dashed himself through the wall and stuck with his team. But Kerb... And, you know, been to the rest of Fnatic, he's now pushing down the mid lane, trying to get some damage and, you know, doing pretty well as far as the split push is concerned. Yeah, I mean, he's got a lot of damage. Now he's going to ripple himself across, take that blue buff. Then he's got a giant wave on the bottom. Keep that farm flowing. And it is working out well for him. Sino is going to come around and interrupt this one, though, with that smite. Should stop him. And, of course, with the flow passive of Yasuo makes it even more effective. Unknown double entendre. Well played, sir. Right now, Fnatic going to secure themselves, Blue Buff. <laughs> going to steal this one away. Uh, take this one without any con contest at all. Millennium will have the timer for Dragon. They picked up the previous one without any battle with Fnatic. And you can see with Kevin being near the mid lane, Millennium are ready for this. They're going to start moving towards the Dragon Pit. Kerb should be able to get there in time. And this could be another fight, which I think probably favors Millennium. I prefer their 5v5 options and the, the dispersion power of that Gragas. Yeah, so Dragon was picked up by Millennium. Two of them being picked up by Fnatic. Who will claim the next one? Millennium in position. We do see Soaz and Kevin butting heads in that mid lane. Kerb's going to come around the side. Whimsy is available if he tries to go for him. Instead, I think Millennium might pick this one up before they get close. Yes, they will. And now Soaz goes a little bit too deep. Dominus Blade pops. Will they just lock him out or will Millennium try and run? Assault battery on Kerb that immediately gets countered by Jerry's wave. And Soaz trying to tank up all that damage. Coming around the backside is Kevin. He's going to get on towards Cyanide. Kerb is running for his life from Soaz. That is going to be one down Aranea. Kerb's going to keep on running. 
that Soaz needs to turn around and take on the rest of the team. He flashes through. Let's not look at Kerb. Let's look at these because Jay Reed's going to be in trouble. He's going to get stunned up. No, flashes away. Soaz is a beast that they are all running from. You're very well played by Fnatic. I talked about the single target ability and that's what they did. They focused Kerb down. This time around, Cyanide focused the right guy. It's not over yet as Fnatic are on the turret. Kerb is still trying to split push and they Fnatic secure the tower, but with a little bit of damage at Kerb maybe, maybe could do the same. I think Millennium might keep chasing here, trying to force them to not back away as quickly as possible. That's what Kevin's doing because Kerb is taking down his mid inner turret, He'll get which it. honestly, I find is more valuable. No, he's backing away. That's a little early. He's just realized it. He's had the call from Kevin. He's like, they're in here. I'm going to throw the barrel. Doesn't oh. quite interrupt him, but it's going to be the turret going down nevertheless. Millennium counter again. Trading tower for tower, but Millennium got the dragon and they only lost one member of their team during the course of that fight. So I think overall net gain for Millennium Millennium. We're still sitting at four towers apiece for both of these teams. But what you've seen from Fnatic is when they stick together as a five-man team, they shove down the lane or the river, and they stick to one guy and one person that's important, in this case, Kerp. The Assault and Battery plus Renekton is enough to keep him out of the fight. Final Breath wasn't even used. There was not enough times for those knockups. This is exactly the, po the point I'd like to highlight here. Look at Kerp. He's been completely focused by Fnatic. Soaz has shoved him out of the fight, and Kevin needed to use that explosive cost defensively. He had to knock members of uh, Fnatic away. And unfortunately, because uh, Millennium were a little bit split up as, as the full five man, they just got pushed all the way back. And all credit to Soaz just really being a threat on that front line. So, gold is even between the two teams. Just a slight gain by Fnatic over the last few seconds has put them in that 400 gold advantage. But honestly, when you're talking 43,000 between the two teams, that really isn't a great deal. 30 minute mark about to be hit here. Millennium have had some long games already up against SK Game, and it was a 50 minute epic. They did finally close it out, but it took them a long time. What are we seeing now? We're in the 30 minute mark. Big late game item starting to come on the board. So two things that we're seeing. First of all, Soaz picking himself up a Thorn Mail, as well as that Infinity Edge being completed for Kerb. So with Infinity Edge and Static Shiv, he's actually got 90% crit chance because of his passive. It doubles it. So very nice uh, itemization. There's a lot of damage that can come down. And I want to play a little bit of Devil's Advocate and say, if you think about the Dragon's fight, Soaz was doing great with Renekton, chasing down. Imagine if it was a Shivana. Imagine if he had Burnout available. He maybe could have killed Kerp, which would have prevented the mid tower going down. Maybe could have stuck to the, you know, sticking the bottom lane. So, just thoughts whether or not Shivana could have done more. But right now, pretty good position for Fnatic. Building up a lot of armor. Randian's Omen completed for Cyanide makes Millennium's life much more difficult for the impending siege and fight. Well, the siege is coming. The barrels are finally rolling out from Kevin. Not any ability power still being picked up by him. He has got the blue barrel buff, though, for that explosive cast to keep it chugging. You can see 3,500 hit points on Kevin right now on that big tanky Gragas. Fnatic looking to see if they can get any pokes, see if they can get anything onto the likes of Jay Reed, Creaton, or Kerp. Because Kerp, remember, despite the fact having crazy damage, is a glass cannon. Yeah, that's the case. He, he's got a tiny bit of armor to survive Caitlyn's damage, but that's it right now. And if, if a good last, uh, fine, last breath can be used on Peke, Reckless, or Yellowstar, that's how Millennium can win a fight. They need to get past Soaz and Cyanide. Once they get past him, damage the back line, and then Millennium can win. Peke is going to go down towards that bottom wave. The moment he shows himself, he realizes it's going to be a 4v5 situation. There's nothing for him to do to get back into it. So as just baiting them out here, using the taunt, lying on the floor with that Renekton. Knows he's the tankiest member. The wave strictly quickly going down as well. They're going to push in for this one. Who are they going to go for? That's the question. Is it just going to be simply the turret they hit? No, there goes the wave. They could jump on towards Yellowstar. That last breath is not going to quite be enough to take him down. You can see Yellowstar will get dropped. Kerb is going to go down as well. So it's a one for one. And now Peke has joined the fray. They're going to chase him on down here. Barrels coming out. Everything they can do to slow him. The culling comes back on towards Soas. But as you see, it does nothing. Ace in the hole finally finds his target. Rectus takes that one down, but that's going to put him out the rest of the fight. Soas comes in, gets the stun on Creaton. Kevin now, he's going to be the focus target. You can see he's got so much hit points. He just keeps on tanking away. He's going to have the belly dash once again. And Kevin finally, finally will go down. It's Rectus that gets him. It was a long fight, but it was a three for one for Millennium. Yeah, at the end of the day, against Fnatic, the Millennium, against Millennium, Fnatic ending up coming away with the victory because Millennium committed so much to killing a support. And once Yellowstar threw that wild growth on himself, as you're about to see, gets caught out, wild growth up, and the rest of Millennium just simply spent too much time killing 
you know, Yellow Star, Creatin only now starts dealing some damage to the tanks. And we talked about how there's no magic damage on the side of Millennium right now. So all of that armor on Soaz and on Cyanide is making that front line impossible to deal with. Creatin's Lucian, Arunea's Lee Sin, and Kerb's Yasuo are going to have to buy a lot of armor penetration, maybe even something like a Black Cleaver to shred the armor and make it even more effective for the rest of the team. And that was the final kill. 4-2-3 now for Reckless. 3-1-1 for Creates on the AD carry starting to get involved as the game starts progressing later and later. Fnatic in position for this Dragon. I'm not sure Millennium are going to be able to compete. No, I don't think Millennium really can. They have a lot of members present though, so if they wanted to all in, they probably could. But I think wisely decide against it. So as it goes a little bit forward, even manages to sneak out there, not even burning a summoner <laughs> spell. You know, such great play from Soas on Renekton with that slice and dice. Barely dashed straight into a Caitlyn trap. You're not going to get away from that one. Banshee's Veil was picked up by Aranea, by the way, in there. I need to question the uh, the last breath that the, the, the Kerb used early on in that fight because he seemed to go a little too early. And like you said, the, the wild growth just popped him straight out of it. Yeah, the problem with that ability usage is you have to put it on Reckless. Yeah, you can kill Lulu, but what that's going to be a little bit of a slow is Kerb's been caught. Cyanide goes in, there is the Wild Growth popping all of them up. This is going to be a wild fight, and it's Fnatic actually coming out the worst right now. Becky does get himself a kill. Kevin's tanking up that damage. Becky is going to be the firing target. Kevin's taken so low, but they don't care because Becky is down. Cyanide is now going to be the focus. Soas is doing what he can. Can he get onto Creator? No, the barrier goes back out, and now the AD carry is just working down those hit points from the backside. He's going to throw out the barrel. Creator, well, he gets on towards him. Soas with the slice, the dice, and the destruction derby. They may turn this fight on his head. Kevin going to run away. The Aqua Prison keeps on there, and that's going to buy them time to get away. Fnatic, wow, they may have lost three on two, but that was great play from Soaz. And that was Millennium's picking that battle. Millennium got onto Reckless. As soon as Reckless was down, they were so confident in their positioning, but the immense amount of armor between Soaz and Cyanide just finishes it out. Look at Millennium's positioning right now. They're anticipating a fight. They're grouped up nicely, and yes, Cyanide got a very good engage onto Kerb. It didn't actually kill him. It didn't take him down. So I like the targeting by Kerb to finish off um, uh, uh, reckless, and I think they have to keep doing that. But the rest of this fight is just a case of a Thorn Mail, Randian Zoman, and an immense amount of HP on that Cyanide and Soaz. He's still sitting at two and a half thousand hit points here, as Soaz just takes forever to be killed by all this physical damage. Yeah, they seem to be lacking something to just burst it, of course. Maybe, maybe, with Kevin with so tanky, now it's time to get some ability power on that Gragas. Start becoming a bit of a threat himself. We'll see how that goes, because right now, you see, Randy and Zoman, Spirit Passage, Sunfire Cape, and then Ninja Tabby, not a sign with a new chain vest coming out. That's going to be a thorn mail. Yeah, I think Kevin has to pick up uh, ability power at some point. His final item has to be something that's going to give them some form of burst, because, you know, and you know what? Let me be honest about this. Even if he does, it's not going to be enough. You know, the respective health pools here, Soaz is sitting at 3,200 HP, and Cyanide is 3,300 hit points. So even if he picks up a measly 150 or 200 AP, his damage on his, his barrels are only going to be, you know, five, 600 at max. So it's not going to be enough to shred through it. But let's take a look at this, because those last fights were close. They were close encounters, Kerb diving on towards Reckless. He now has a Guardian Angel. That could be the turn of the tide. Well, GA will help out Kerb to at least <laughs> assist in the killing of Cyanide and Soaz, but it's still going to take a very long time. The critical hit strikes are going to be helpful, but there's no armor penetration as RNA is the next target. RNA is in trouble. That's going to be the assault battery, and honestly, it's not really what they wanted. Quickly going straight in there. Look at Peke. He's getting dropped. Melty down there. Yellowstar, the next focus target. He gets dropped. Cyanide is going to try and dash away from this one. He has to run for his life. Reckless has got away at the top there. Is he going to be safe? I think he should be. Jay Reed's going to go to the Aqua Prism any second now. Cyanide running away. Kraton should be able to have one. One last dash to get on towards him. Instead, he backs away. They should just go for Baron. That was the perfect engage from Millennium. The Gragas Barrel into a three-man final breath allows Kerb to just shred through them. Now, Fnatic challenging for Baron. It's going low, and I think Millennium wise to back away. It is wise to back away. So as doing what he can to keep him off. And Millennium may well have won that fight, but again, they don't quite have enough to siege the Baron. No, they don't have enough to siege Baron, and I think Kerb needs armor penetration. Now, he can't be relying only on that bonus armor pen from his ultimate. I'd like to see a Last Whisper picked up. 
thank you for this replay because there, look at that, one, two, three members knocked up into the air and then held in the air by Yasuo's final breath. It allows Yellow Star and Xpeka to just get focused down very, very quickly. A little bit of a chase from Millennium here to pick up their third and final kill of the fight. And I think if Soaz wasn't as big and scary, that probably could have been a Baron. But since then, he's now got a Randian Zomin as well. Plus the Sun 5k, plus the Thorn Mail. Physical armor, uh, physical damage is not going to be worrying Soaz. Okay, so let's see how this goes for the rest of the team. Millennium now going back down towards that bottom lane, keeping that wave clear going. It's going to try and push it out. They need to push the top wave as well, but no, nope. for Millennium, dares go dealt there at the moment on, the, on their own because it's Soaz in his spirit. He's just charging on through the minions. They know that Peke can burst anyone down, and Fnatic have proven many, many times in the past they can be waiting in any bush. What we have been seeing, though, over the last sort of 15 minutes of gameplay, no towers have actually dropped. Since that last dragon fight where they traded the mid inner and bottom inner turret, no one's been able to get to a tower and it's just been these skirmishes around the red buff and a lot of emphasis being placed on uh, Baron. We do see Kerp in a little bit of trouble. He should be able to get away. Maybe not. There's a lot of bursts coming down. That's going to be the Guardian Angel pops. The rest of the team have to close the gap here or they're going to lose him out there. Kevin failed flush. Oh no, he failed again. He didn't quite get in. He tried to just body slam across, but he didn't get there in time. Now he's got flush available. He's still, you can see Reckless and Kraton, they're going for it. One, But it is Kerp that's has been dropped. The Guardian Angel down. That is no a useless item for the next few minutes. Yeah, that was a comedy of errors there. First of all, Simon he hit the wall with his Vault Breaker, was unable to get that Assaulter battery initially on Kerp. Luckily, Soaz was close enough to zone him out, control him, and then unfortunately for Kerp, his Wind Wall came late, so he was rooted in place by Peke. Fnatic then pick up the kill, allow them to pick up now the fifth tower of the game, and they're going to get control with a Dragon, as well as most likely warding out this half of the map. A tight, tight game, certainly the closest that Fnatic have had to face so far in this spring LCS split. They're 3-0, remember, in the League Millennium, pushing them all the way here. They're only 1-2 and two themselves, and you know, it was Fnatic that were saying all along that Millennium are a tough, tough matchup, and it seems there's something that's happened between these two while doing practices that has really given Fnatic problems, and we think we're seeing it right here. Well, right now, Millennium are going to try themselves getting this Baron. Fnatic are responding quickly, but Reckless is miles away. Baron is down to about half health. Once Soaz gets involved, this is where it becomes very scary. Millennium appealing! Remember, Cyanide, he smoked it all before, but when they're really aware of that one, they don't have fall for the problem that Alliance had, and Cyanide is keeping that Baron alive. Now it's regening. Yeah, we do see Kerp has now rejoined the fight, as has Reckless. Reckless just stopped to push in that mid-wave. Now, Pick is a little bit away. If Millennium could get in onto Fnatic, that would have been the time to fight, but unfortunately, they weren't able to find that opportunity, and everybody gets away without any kills being registered for either team. So, let's take a little breather here, Trevor, because there's a lot of items that have been picked up across the board. Everybody's starting to reach their final build phases. We're also starting to see a Randian's Omen being picked up by Yellowstar. That's three random zombies. And you know, because of the physical damage from Millennium and the, the lack of ability power threat of Kevin Scragus, that is a great pickup. When you consider the towers, the dragons, the gold, etc., it's definitely working in their favor. And we even see Soaz going towards a Blade of the Ruined King right now with that Cutlass in his back pocket. Uh, also interesting to note, the Alacrity Boots have been picked up by Reckless as his sort of tier three upgrade. He wants the mobility, wants to be able to run away from the barrels and sort of kite that Lee Sin and Yasuo combo that want to dive him. Yeah, and the Warden's Mail makes perfect sense because anyone hits him, they get slowed and he just yep. runs away or 90 caliber nets away as quick as he can. So as, again, like you said, that giant tanky beast, he's been doing a fantastic job of getting in the faces of Millennium and causing them umpteen problems. And so far, it seems that Fnatic now have Millennium on the back foot. What I really like about Fnatic, the way they've played this game, realizing that their opponents have such an, a massive amount of uh, physical damage threat, they pushed towers down early and forced Millennium to slow their gameplay down. And what that allowed Fnatic to do is build up this massive armor reserve. We're going to see a fourth Randian's Omen on Reckless once he eventually upgrades that uh, Warden's Mail. And I think it's very good decision making with their composition, you know, realizing that that roaming threat of Arane and Kerb could have snowballed out of control, but they only got two kills in 20 minutes and it wasn't enough to accelerate Millennium ahead. Fnatic, I feel, are fancying a fight. Peke's just backed off. 
He literally only just been back to base a moment ago. Now he's gone to get that brilliance pot. He's going to pick up this blue buff, and I think they're going to maybe try and force Sonic around that Baron. There he goes, 5,000 gold advantage in Fnatic's favor so far. The towers, you can see, is just 5-4 apiece. Very tight game. This fight could hinge on the entire game. Yeah, I think this fight could determine who loses an inhibitor or who loses Baron. And uh, very crucially, Kerb has still not completed his last Whisper. Kerb still does not have any inherent armor penetration to get through the massive amount of armor that Fnatic have been able to put together. Soaz, with his lifesteal, auto attacks, and massive HP pool, is now starting this Baron off. There is a ward revealing Reckless, so Millennium are aware of it. They can see Reckless just for a second. Maybe they can't. Maybe no, they, they can't, can't see it. They can't see it. He's actually out of it. That was just simply the spectator bug that you can see the shots coming across. Yep. And Fnatic has snuck it. Completely snuck it. Completely, completely snuck it. Unable to react to that one. And I think Fnatic, just great play. Using the range of Caitlyn is something we have seen a couple of times in the past. And, you know, unfortunate for Millennium, they had a ward there, but it was too close to the wall. It wasn't deep enough to reveal Reckless's auto attacks. Making full use of Caitlyn's range there. Working out wonders because I don't believe Lucian could do that from that side. No, he doesn't have the range. Yeah. Uh, Caitlyn's the only auto attack carry. Well, mm. as long as Tristana, uh, Tristana <laughs> can do it as well as Jinx, actually. I'd take that back. There's a few that can do it. Uh, the <laughs> one thing that was smart about it, the decision to, to go for the Sneaky Baron, was because they knew that Kerb and Creatine had just been in the mid lane, and Kerb was, he didn't have his last Whisper. And I was talking about how crucial that item was going to be for a team fight. So Fnatic making a calculated call. We think Kerb is backed off to pick up that last Whisper, so let's try and rush Baron down because even if they, you know, do challenge, most likely Kerb's not going to be there, and it ends up working out for them. It worked wonders for them, and now it's going to be Fnatic on the push. And top inhibitor, uh, top inner turret, sorry, is going to be the focus. Reckless is already going to go up and clear that wave in the top lane, shove it on down and towards Millennium, and Millennium have struggled. It's been close team fights between them, but now with Kevin down the bottom, no teleports available, he's going to have to move very quickly the moment they show up in that top. If Millennium try to go for a four-man defense, they have to kill Reckless and Pekka instantly and then force Fnatic to back away. Kevin is recalling. He doesn't have home guard boots just yet. He'll need to buy those most likely and try get to lane. So as just laying on the floor with all of that armor, he's not even being dented by that tower. And Millennium unable to challenge. So Fnatic with the Baron continue to drive on through. Now 6-4 in favor of the turrets there. Aranea are trying to bait something out. The slash is coming through. So as getting poked, but again, he's still got a 2,000 hit point buffer. Yeah, with the Infinity Edge and Last Whisper, there's actually a little bit of damage being dealt to Soaz. So if they can kill the Squishies and then focus down Soaz and Cyanide single-handedly, I now think Millennium have enough damage to deal with them. But it would have to be a picture-perfect fight, like we've seen around the red buff about 20 minutes ago, where they killed Reckless, and they were trying to kill the tanks of Soaz and Cyanide. Reckless backing off, Peke backing off. They're going to go buy some more items. Soaz is just going to clear out that middle wave and keep it shoving forward. Let's see what they've gone with. I think it's just potions once again and they picked up. And Randuin's Omen has been completed for Reckless. That is number oh four now on the side of Fnatic. In addition to that, there's a Glacial Shroud sitting in the hands of uh, Cyanide. Yeah. So once that eventually becomes what I believe is going to become a Frozen Heart, you're even going to be reducing the attack speed of Lee Sin, Yasuo, and Kriaten. And Fnatic realizing and having this immense lead, Millennium unable to challenge, they lose another dragon, and Fnatic grows this lead to just shy of 10,000 gold. And it's interesting, because this is something we talked about right at the start. Once those picks and bans went in, we're like, they don't have much magic ability, if any at all. Because Kevin, while you're saying, yeah, Gragas is there, but he's not using that no. ability power. No, definitely not. And, you know, the composition of Millenniums was an early game comp. Lee Sin is an early game champion. Yasuo, you know, we haven't seen him scale too many... We haven't seen him too many games, so we can't talk about how well he scales many the big games. things. <laughs> but, you know, that's a very high kill combo team. And unfortunately for Millennium, they didn't pick up enough kills, they didn't pick up enough towers early on to make Fnatic fall behind and make them struggle to buy armor. Right now, Millennium going to try to defend this five-man push of Fnatic. Baron is slowly wearing off. I think it won't have much time left on it. It's just about to wear out. Fnatic now trying to pick a battle under this inhibitor tower. So as tanks a chunk of damage, that shield coming out from Yellow Star, plenty enough to stop the tower damage going through. He's just going to walk on through there again. You can see though, this is what you talked about, the Infinity Edge. That was a good chunk of damage, so taking off Soaz. Yeah, but that was Kerb 
um, Creatine and only a landing some poke, plus an, a turret shot went in there as well. So I think what this means is Fnatic realizing, yes, they are incredibly strong, but they can't just win any fight at all. Millennium, they want to go and they're looking for a situation mm. where a final, a last breath can knock out the squishies. But look at Reckless and Peke. They are sitting opposite sides of the lane. As long as they don't group up, I don't know if Millennium can get the perfect engage. Because the Baron buff just wore off, the moment it did, Millennium stepped forward. They are looking for this one. Aranea once again throwing out the kick, trying to land it on Peke, trying to find one of those big, juicy carries. But instead, it's not going to happen. Look at the top. Look at the middle. Those waves are being pushed out by Millennium. They're going to shove the bottom lane on, and they may well try and put some pressure back onto Fnatic. So as is waiting, Fnatic, they're going to do a death push. Creatine is trying to sneak into position. The rest of Fnatic are once again moving in. Millennium are so smart to back away because they had no vision. They did not move past their line of wards, and I think that is a very, very good play. If they'd stepped one, you know, iota further, Soaz would have stunned them, and the rest of Fnatic would have piled on through. What measurement is it? An I'm not sure, but it sounded really good. <laughs> 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 wasn't sure on the measurement. Look at Peke, he's still waiting in the bush, but <laughs> Jerry Gray, Jerry and Gray are like, no. Do not want. No, we've, we've played Fnatic before. We know where this goes. Jerry could die. Uh, Peke very wisely backs away. I think as soon as you realize that there was the potential of being surrounded, Aranea can try chase him, but I think Peke, that's Banshee's well down. Oh, very good flash. Forces the flash out, and that's going to be, can go across towards one of the minions. No, he's not going to. Instead, Kerb's going to continue chasing here, but the rest of the team will close in. Does put the ward down, but immediately, yes, least that will stop an industry. Millennium need to keep going. Soaz is top lane. The time it'll take him to get from there to the bottom in a turret would have allowed Millennium to challenge for it. At the very least, they could have picked up that tower. Instead, they're putting a bit more priority on blue buff, denying that to expect his LeBlanc. And I actually think that was picked up by Creatine, if I notice yep. correctly. So trying to get his maybe culling a little bit lower on cooldown, spamming out those piercing lights to defend under the tower. And Fnatic, even though they've got a 10,000 gold lead, they're not super confident about diving. They don't want to pick a fight they're, they're not comfortable with. So as they're still pushing the bottom lane, uh, top lane, sorry, so Millennium are just going to shove on through. Nobody from P Fnatic has responded to this one. This is a tower for Millennium. Yeah, it, it took a little bit longer than I think uh, Millennium were anticipating, but they will pick this one up. Completely uncontested. Fnatic way out of position for that one. And I think with Baron respawning in about 20 or 30 seconds, if Millennium can play the map correctly, they may actually be able to stick around, either challenge for Baron, or maybe even go for Inhibitor. This is going to be tense. We're up to 50 minutes, ladies and gentlemen. It is a 9,000 gold lead, just shy of 10,000 for Fnatic, but that doesn't really show because it's 70,000 to 80,000 right now. You see Aaron Air coming in there, doesn't want to get caught out. Without Banshee's Veil, though, it will give him that slight defensive start on Fnatic, but the Fnatic have the positional advantage for the Baron. Yeah, one thing to highlight right now is Reckless has sold his boots and gone for that Zephyr, which we see AD Carries doing all so often. The two-mana Fnatic has enough damage and survivability to pick this Baron up, and Millennium are still not fighting. Baron will be secured, and Peke is just running interference. Millennium are responding to this way too late, and now they're going in. They come in far too late, and Fnatic going to turn it on his head. Wild growth popping them all up. They can see the wave jumps knocking them back. You can see Jerry Kirk trying to get in there. Guardian Angels comes back up. Can he get on towards Reckless? They're going to try and dive in there. No, Reckless takes down Kirk. Soez has took all of the damage, all of the abuse from Millennium. The bubble will be enough to save the day. Kratos going to run away from this one. Araneo should safeguard across to uh, Jerry in a moment. The culling just keeping them at bay. But this could be Fnatic's game right now. He's in the hole blocked off wow. by Jerry. Massive amount of damage. Kerb didn't even get to use last breath in that fight. Was locked up so well by Fnatic. Turned into a munchkin. They silenced him. They rooted him in place. And he wasn't able to have an impact in that fight. Now Fnatic, knowing they have a 5v3, they take the inhibitor down. They can finish the game right here. 40 second death timers for Millennium. They know they're in trouble. They're going to try and force them away. But Fnatic going straight for those Nexus turrets. It's Reckless hitting it like a hammer right now. Just charging it down. Creatine's going to come across. The minions are not going to be enough. He tries to use everything he can, but immediately gets locked up. Ace and Nahal, Assault Battery on towards him. Just dropping the rest of Millennium. And Reckless continues his killing spree. And that is going to be Fnatic taking the game against Millennium. What a hard-fought battle after 52 minutes. Fnatic had to dig very, very deep. That is the hardest match that they have had all week long. Fnatic lock it down, going 4-0 in Super League. Well, it was the death of the Immortals in the bottom lane early on. 6-3-6 for Reckless in the end, and 0-4-12 for Yellowstar. Millennium certainly have given the toughest test that Fnatic have faced.
but it is 4 0 now for Fnatic in this Super Week. And Millennium, they go 1 and 3. This is their last game now for Week 1. I think they can take a lot away from that game. They performed well, they had a few fights that were good. They feel like their early game presence needed work. I think they needed to be more aggressive with those champions, get more kills on Yasuo. That well played at the end of the day, and I think almost anticipating that Yasuo pick, the Lulu was in there. You know, transform him into a munchkin with that polymorph. It worked very well. It's, it's a good counter to Yasuo's engage. And you, I'm not sure. I mean.